all right, we're returning to this amazing, incredible sicha speech of the Lubavitcher Rebbe, where the Rebbe points out that there's a commandment to believe in a prophet, a Navi, and that this commandment is for all time. And even though that it says that <clears throat> in, the, in the second temple or when the second temple was destroyed, it says that prophecy departed from Israel. It says what it means is that it just temporarily departed, but it didn't wasn't negated. And the, the Maimonides, that he's like the master of Jewish law, he says clearly that it is one of the 13 principles of faith. We have to believe in the prophets. And he says that, that he gives all the qualifications of who a prophet is, how to find out who a prophet is. There's criteria. Not everybody can stand up and say, I'm a prophet. But there are definite criteria for what a prophet is. The Mashiach is supposed to be a prophet. He's, like an, he's going to be a prophet even greater than Moses. That's what it says. But this idea of prophecy, of nevuah, is very essential to direct the Jewish people what's right and what's wrong. And of course, that's why it's so, it's very necessary. Without him, the Jewish people really can't survive. Like we see today, they're like sheep scattered all over the world. They have no identity. The prophet gives everybody identity. Of course, because the prophet is necessary, so there's always the danger of false prophets. <clears throat> right? I mean, because we have to believe, so it opens up the whole world of gullibility. But basically, that's what all these religions in the world are. <clears throat> They're just making the, the, the taking advantage of the darkness <clears throat> and the lack of leadership and prophecy in the world, or maybe the lack, more the lack of wanting to listen to the prophets. But the Rebbe says, nevertheless, in every generation, there's definitely a prophet. In our generation, according to what we said, now we can understand the, the novelty of our generation. In general, and especially in the last generation, especially our generation, because like what the previous Lubavitcher Rebbe, Rabbi Yosef Yitzchak, I showed everybody the picture, here he is, Rabbi Yosef Yitzchak Schneerson of blessed memory. He um, was Rebbe for 30 years. The first 30 years was in Russia. And then there started, he was put into prison by the communists and miraculously released. And then the next 10 years of his life, he was in Poland and uh, this. And then the last 10 years of his life, he was in America. And that's where he started this whole Chabad outreach movement. And Rabbi Yosef, it says, the previous Rebbe, he's the leader of our generation. And the Rebbe himself said that he is just a follower, a continuer. He's just a, uh, you say, He's just an extension of the previous Lubavitcher Rebbe. So he said, the Rebbe said that we've already finished everything. As far as the future redemption, it's already the time. All the work that we've had to done in a general way, it's all finished. We have to work on ourselves personally, individually, to want to be part of this whole thing, to accept the whole thing, because the whole thing of Mashiach is to change everybody from the inside. That's what this whole speech is talking about, that there won't be any need for, <clears throat> like it says, shoftim v'shotrin, judges and policemen. There won't be a need for policemen. There'll only be judges and advisors. Everyone will want to do what God wants. Everyone will realize that they're just creations, and they'll be very grateful to the Creator, and they'll realize that the Creator just wants us to do what we're created to do, to fill our responsibility. We have an obligation to the world to fix up the world, to be good people. And we don't have an obligation to ourselves. The world doesn't owe us anything. Uh, it's given us everything. We owe the world everything. We owe God everything. But nevertheless, God says, do a little bit. I'll give you everything. What, what do you want? You want food? I'll give you food. You want this? Whatever you want. <clears throat> but don't want things that are forbidden to want. Says the Rebbe, all this, the general work has already been done. According to all the signs, individuals have to work on themselves in order to be in tune with this. But the Rebbe says, all the signs we are already in the last moments, seconds, right before the total redemption, the future redemption. 
And like we said so many times, the future redemption, the idea of what Mashiach will do is he's going to change the priorities of all mankind. People will only be interested in making this physical world a blessed, holy, meaningful place, according to the Torah. They won't be interested in going to heaven. They're not going to be interested in, in sins and, 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 and the, all these religious wars and crazy things. They'll be interested in only one thing, what the Torah says. The non-Jews will have the six more, seven Noah commandments and all their implications, and the Jews have a, in other words, all potential for good will be revealed. That's the, the, the future redemption, the potential with this, which is within us and the potential which is in the world. Since the time the Torah commanded that Shoftim Vishotrim, that judges and policemen you should put in all of your gates and in the courses of all of the generations since then. This was 3,300 years ago. And especially the previous, the first generations of the exile right after the temple was destroyed since and they did not merit to the future redemption. And it didn't, and the redemption, there was no redemption then. The third temple was not built. So this is a sign that they didn't finish what they had to do. So therefore they were still uh, affected by the sins that they had done. Like it says, It says the reason the Jews were exiled from the land of Israel is because of their sins. And now we're fixing that up, right? Because of the concealment of the world, Therefore, the Jews were still in, they still needed what's called shoftecha and yotzecha. They had not gotten to this level of, that they didn't need policemen, that advisors were sufficient. They had to have policemen through all the generations. That's why there were all the tortures and the punishments and things like that. Avobat, la'ach ribui. Just one moment. The Acher Riboy. Oh, but after the Jewish people have been in exile and they have <clears throat> suffered so much and they've done so many good deeds and they've served God with such tremendous devotion and self-sacrifice in, in the course of all these 2,000 years of exile. So it's understood that closer and closer we are reaching the appointed time. And especially in the last generations where we already have revealed what's called the inside of the Torah, the Baal Shem Tov revealed, revealed Hasidut. And Chabad Hasidut explained it in very, very great depth and length and wideness and detail. Beginning, first of all, even before the Baal Shem Tov, the Arisa, the Rabbi Yitzchak Luria, he revealed Secrets of the Torah that no one had revealed, especially to the public. And afterwards, God told the Baal Shem Tov, your wellspring should be spread out. And then by means of, after the Baal Shem Tov, our re Rebbe's, like we're learning in the morning, the altar of the first Rebbe, that by means of them, says prophecy returned to Israel, like the Rambam said. The stories without any end, the Baal Shem Tov, the amazing prophecies that he made and miracles that he would not to talk about the, the, the pupils of the Baal Shem Tov, not just in Chabad. Gila Sodo Shal Avarav Anivim. There's also all the Sephardic Tzaddikim that learned from the Baal Shem, from, the, from the, the, the Arizal and also that were exposed to the Baal Shem Tov. Heim, Heinam, Nevi, Doreinu. They are the prophets of our generation. The prophet says, God said, I'll put a prophet in, among you, among you, because these are all these great Jews. They're the representatives of Moses in our generation. Shoftenu, this is Nisienu. These are, as far as we're concerned, the leaders of Chabad. The leaders of Chabad in every generation, they are the prophets of every generation. A Nasi, the, the, the leader, a Nasi, means that he's elevated above everyone. He's totally above anyone else in the generation. Like he says, he's elevated from his shoulders and above. And also our rabbis taught Torah, the Chabad rabbis. They taught Torah to everybody. Shoftim, they were the like the judges of the, their generation. And they were also the advisors. They gave it amazing advice. That's what the whole Tanya is. He says clearly, it's just a book of advice. 
Until actually physical advice, the Rebbe said, you know, do make this operation, don't make that, go over here to find work. Amazing prophecies and directions that the Rebbe's gave, and especially by means of the revelation of Hasidut Chabad, that this was put into Chachba Bin Adas. Now, every human being can have proper conception of God, understanding of God, and realization of God in a, in, in a way that can be comprehended. In a way, that, in a way that this is, even the animal soul can understand it. I'll call upon him to eats a tova kamashmo. In a way of, well, you know, that's a nice idea. You know, put on tefillin every day, your life will be better. Okay, I'll try it. Shemakabelat b'seichel v'regesh adam that a person can actually feel that God is the creator. A little bit, at least, to the point where at least the person doesn't worry so much about himself. He's not so afraid of the world. He realizes that God is with me. God loves me. I'm not alone. Perhaps not, no better feeling in the world to know that you're not alone. To be alone is, is a terrible, terrible feeling. And the world suffers from it. It could be that all of the aggression and depression and, 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 and the, the obsessions and things like that in the world come from a person just feeling that he's alone that he's empty, that there's no, when a person feels that God is with him and that God is even creating him and God is enlivening him, and that's the lessons of Hasidut, constantly, every instant, then this is accepted in a person's mind, is it at least a little bit. And by means of the revelation of the inside of the Torah that explains to us what the commandments are and how amazing it is to learn Torah through the commandments, what Hasidut Chabad explains, Ad It says those people who taste from this taste of godliness that's all around us and inside of us, and especially in the commandments, like we just finished learning in the Kuti Torah, this joy of the of the commandments, as that gives you a taste of life. That by the means of tasting this life, you taste. Now you're just not tasting a pleasure from the commandment. You're tasting a taste of godliness. This becomes a gate. Shoftim b'shoftim tasebachol sharecha. This becomes a gate, a door, and a beginning to the revelation of the true revelation that Mashiach is going to reveal of the inside of the Torah. That's how the book, the Shir Hashirim, Song of Songs, starts off. He says, he will kiss me with the kisses of his mouth. Shir Hashirim l'shno yeshakeni b'neshikas piyot. That God will kiss me with the kisses of his mouth. So what's that talking about? It's talking about the secrets of the Torah. The Torah comes from God's mouth. The kisses, that's an inner connection to the Torah. That's what it means. God will reveal the inner secrets of the Torah even more than Hasidut that reveals it now. And by means of tasting this now, by learning Hasidut, the whole world will become a vessel, an inner vessel to the revelation of the inside of the Torah, the godliness of the Torah, which will come by means of Mashiach. All of this is even more in our generation. Our generation, we have already spread out the ideas of Hasidut in the, every corner of the world. Every corner of the world is a Chabad house. Every place was a Jew. There's a, even a place of potential that could be a Jew is a Chabad house. So but often in a movement in a way that's understood to every person, even in people that are found the furthest, that can't be anything further than it. Right? You have nowadays... Chabad houses in Russia, in places places where the communists they, they they would kill a person if you say if you tried to to influence someone else with Judaism, it was punishable by death. That's why the the previous Lubavitcher Rebbe, right, Rabbi Yosef Yitzchak, that he was imprisoned and sentenced to death. Right, he was supposed to be killed on the first day he was imprisoned. And why? Spreading Judaism. So in that place, where they spent, even the first Lubavitcher Rebbe, which that was before communism, the time of the Tsar, he was also sentenced to death. <clears throat> right? A religious Jew was against, they were like crazy you know, Russian Orthodox. <clears throat> Judaism was, who spread Judaism? Unheard of. <clears throat> Spreading Judaism, just to hold on to Judaism. And now in Russia, there's Chabad houses everywhere, and there's Jews that don't even know they're Jews. There's Jews that their mother... Their grandmother, the great grandmother, didn't know that she was Jewish. It's just a great, there's a picture or there's, a, there's something of a great great grandmother lighting candles. So they found the, 
the, the, the Shabbos candles, candelabra of the great, great, great grandmother, the tefillin of the great, great. <clears throat> all of a sudden he realizes, wow, I'm, what's your name? My name is, 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 is uh, Stanislav. What was it before? Just to finally, it was Rosenberg. That was not my name. That was the name of my great, great grandmother was Rosenberg. But we changed that name. Right? <clears throat> so the, all of a sudden, in the corners of the world, Jews are waking up. We're going to see today at three o'clock, we're going to learn the Haftorah, the beautiful Haftorah of Isaiah, about how God loves the Jewish people. He's going to gather them all together. Okay, the, the, <clears throat> all of them, they'll all wake up. Itori, itori. The Gam also, Targum Pinini Satora, the also, <clears throat> the, 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 these ideas of Hasidut have been explained and translated into all of these languages, Russian, French, English, by means of the previous Lubavitcher Rebbe, that he's the leader of our generation in a way that it's increasing and increasing and increasing until the last days of the previous Rebbe, that it was also printed. The Tanya was printed, it's printed in Braille, but even blind people can read it because of Ivri Saginor, it says, According to like the, the previous Rebbe said that we have already finished all of the topics, all of the things that caused us to be in exile, including the service of our Rebbe's to teach everyone and to advise everyone. And now a generation is Akshardori. Our generation is a proper generation. It's ready. So it's understood. Shekabar, he gives man, says the Rebbe, the time has come that Ashiva Shoftayach Karishona that God should return back the judges like in the beginning. In other words, to make a new beginning. And now there'll be advisors that will start off. That's how the Rebbe said, advisors, they will actually kick it into motion. The first, the new redemption, the tachlik deshlemot and the ultimate completion. And we will not need policemen anymore. There won't be any need for punishments and things like that because everything has already been purified. <clears throat> after this has been done by means of our rabbis. Now it's understood <clears throat> what each and every person can learn from this Shabbat, Parshat Shoftim, in our generation, and especially late, the last times when we can see that we are in the last seconds, right before the last seconds of exile. Now, all we have to do is just and live as though we are in the future redemption. We have to advertise to everybody. And what does it mean? Doing good, thinking good, saying good, feeling good, learning more Torah. To advertise, a person has to advertise to himself and to everyone that he can, that he can reach, <clears throat> that everyone has to accept on themselves. <clears throat> to accept on themselves and to take to themselves stronger and stronger and with more, <clears throat> I say, sincerity and enthusiasm. And <clears throat> the teachings and the advices that are given by the judges and the advisors of our generation, and who are these, the rabbis in general, and especially the rabbi, the pre previous Lubavitcher Rebbe or the Rebbe, it's coming, that is the result of all of the Rebbe's before him. <clears throat> and what is the result? What, what is the message we're supposed to spread out? Says the Rebbe like this. The Torah says, in this week's Torah portion, Navi Akim Lehem I will, God says, I will provide a prophet in the Jewish people, just like Moses. I will put my words in his mouth and he will speak to the Jewish people everything I say and you should listen to him. This is not just a biblical idea. This was not just said to Moses. It was said to you and me. Like the Rambam said before that if there is a person <clears throat> that has these qualities, qualifications, and the completion that has to be for a, the, the completeness, the wholesomeness that is <clears throat> required for a prophet. And this prophet shows future things and he shows miracles. As we saw many, many generations by the previous Rebbe, 
many, many times by the previous Rebbe, amazing miracles, and even more so by the Rebbe himself. We don't believe, nevertheless, we're not, we don't believe in this prophet because of the miracles that he does, but because it is a commandment in the Torah of Moshe. Just like it's a commandment to put on to fill in the commandment to keep on Shabbat, is also is a commandment of no less importance and perhaps even of more importance to look for and to believe in a prophet. The Torah says that if he makes this, whatever signs, if he makes prophecies that are accurate and he has all these criteria, you must listen to him. <clears throat> and by means of this, that he says things that are going to be in the world and what he says comes to be true. Like we saw this by the previous Rebbe many times. So you have to listen to him even more. He says a prophet that has been appointed by another prophet. And like it says in our generation, the previous Lubavitcher Rebbe, he was appointed by his father, who was also a prophet. <clears throat> this is drawn to the generation after him and by means of his pupils. The same thing with the Rebbe. The Rebbe was picked by the previous Rebbe. Hari, who Becheskas Navi. He is a prophet. And Ein Shani, and the second one, a prophet that has been appointed by another prophet, you don't have to ask him any questions. You don't have to demand any miracles from him. But in any case, the previous Rebbe had both. He both did the miracles and the same thing with the Rebbe, Shlita. He did both. He both was appointed by a prophet and also he did amazing miracles. Now we have to rem remember, okay, you can say, okay, listen, he's saying this because he's blowing his own trumpet. Uh, okay, you can say that. But the fact of the matter is, is we need a prophet. And there is none. Who are you going to say? Maybe, maybe you can find somebody else. Good, but you have to find somebody else. It's a necessary thing to do. It's a necessary thing to do. One thing for sure, the Rebbe has all the qualifications. We have to, and you have to listen to everything that he says immediately, even before he makes a miracle, if, if he's proven to be a prophet. And it's forbidden to think negatively about him and to go against his prophecy like Korach did. And maybe he's not telling me the truth. Maybe <clears throat> there's a, it says in the, in the Torah, don't test God like you tested him in the desert, in Masa and Mariba, when they were, Moses told the people to do something and they did the opposite. And since you know that the person is a prophet and you know that there's a prophet among you, so therefore you shouldn't think anything, shouldn't think twice. Since that you believe in, that there must be a prophet <clears throat> and you see that this person has the qualifications, so the Torah tells you that you must believe in what he says and follow what he says not because these are the words of a prophet, because these are the words of God. God is putting these words in his mouth. That's Judaism. <clears throat> Even if he's saying words that were said, they're not the words of God. A <speaking in Hebrew> love. Even though these are new things that are being said, nevertheless, we have a teaching that we have to advertise to all the people of our generation that God has blessed us with, and he has chosen, and he has appointed a human being that has free choice, and he himself is totally above everyone in his generation, and he is the judge, and he is the advisor, and he is the prophet of the generation. The Rebbe now is talking about himself. <clears throat> that he is giving orders, and he is giving like a judge does, and he is giving advice like a prophet does regarding the service of all the Jewish people and all of the human beings in this generation in all matters of Torah and the commandments. I mean, you could just take a simple example. We've done it many times. But in the Six-Day War, the Rebbe said clearly, and he advertised, and it was all the papers, that the war is going to end in a few days. You have absolutely nothing to be afraid of. There was not one expert, not one rabbi, not one general that agreed with him. 
Not one person agreed with it. But nobody had the, the what do you want to call it? The certainty to disagree with him. Okay, that's the Rebbe's opinion. That's what he says. Nothing to worry about. Israel is the safest place in the world. Don't run away from Israel. There were people that wanted to run away. Everyone was saying that that's it. Israel is going to be destroyed. They had prepared in one of these big stadiums, 75,000 coffins. They thought there was going to be just dead people all over the place. And the Rebbe said, don't be afraid. Nothing's going to happen. Right? He was the only one that said that. And he was right. Everyone was wrong. When there was the Scud missiles, and Saddam Hussein said, I'm going to blow up, I'm going to burn half of Israel, I'm going to kill everybody. So the people asked the Rebbe, should, should I go to Israel or not? The Rebbe said, it's the safest place in the world. No one's going to get hurt. Again, no one agreed with the Rebbe. No one, no one had the, 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 the guts to say the Rebbe is wrong. They said, okay, that's his opinion. That's his opinion. But nobody agrees with that opinion. The Rebbe was right. Everybody else was wrong. Nobody was hurt. He told people they should go to Israel when everyone said you have to get out. That was common sense to get out. The Rebbe said no. And there's stories like that, thousands of individual people, the Rebbe told people not to make operations, yes to make, things against all of the doctors, and it came to be true, amazing. I have personally stories, right? The doctor, all the doctors told my wife, my wife gave birth to the first two children was cesarean birth. She had problems anyway. So all the doctors said, that's it, you can't have any more children. You, you'll die, there'll be a silent rupture. They had all these things that they said. So we went to the Rebbe, and the Rebbe said, I don't see what's the problem. I don't see what's the problem. A lot of people give birth more than one children in cesarean section. All of the doctors, all the professors said, it's forbidden, it's not going to work, you won't have any children, the womb will rupture, you're going to die, everybody's going to die. Right? And the Rebbe said, I don't see any problem whatsoever. Nobody agreed with The Rebbe was right, we had two more children after that. Also by Syrian, but there was no, and the, and the later births were easier than the first one. The first time I wiped your birth, she had to be six months, six, six weeks in uh, what's Shmirat the Rayon, in, 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 ten, in, in care to watch that the, 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 there wasn't a silent rupture or whatever it was. The, 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 she had to, the, 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 the first two children, she had to be under supervision all the time. The, the last child, she worked up until the last day and she just went and gave birth. Ubenogea, it was by Caesarean birth, but it was. Ubenogea, Lechai, Ban Hagas, Yom, Yom, Klois, Gam, Bakol, Darachecha, Bakol, Masecha. That the, the, the prophet of our generation, he gives practical advice to every single one in our generation. And the main prophecy that he's making is the main prophecy. Of the, of the prophet of our generation, and the Rebbe is speaking about himself, is immediately the redemption is coming. Immediately Mashiach is here. Do not even consider that there's anything other than this. And together with this merit, there is to every one of our generation the obligation to accept on themselves the judges and the advisors of his generation. You have to listen to what the rabbis say. Riboy, mishpatim, riboy etzot, a lot of laws, a lot of advice. In addition to this, the, 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 judge, the judgments that are given down by the rabbis and their advisors, the rabbi said everybody should make themselves an advisor. And who are they? The rabbis the leaders of our generation, that then there, there is, a person will have the certainty, which is understood to everybody, when you get a good advice, you'll have a certainty, you'll do things from yourself, not in a way that you're commanded to do it, you hold your nose, you do what you have to do, you'll, you'll be happy to do the commandments, to do things in the way the Rebbe says, to spread Judaism to others, to encourage other Jews to be Jewish, even a person, you might think, what do I have to have? I have to have a, a rabbi tell me what to do. I have to have someone advice. I'm already great enough. I understand everything. Nevertheless, if the majority disagrees with the, of rabbis, then you have to do according to what the rabbi said. And by means of this Kabbalah and accepting the teachings of the 
judges and the advisors of our generation, by means of this, it makes a beginning of the answering of our prayers that we pray every day, Hoshiva Shoftenu Rishona, may God return our judges like in the beginning and our advisors should make a new onset in the Gula Miti Tashlema, there'll be a total new redemption, a new world. That's what we're gonna read in the Haftorah this afternoon, three o'clock, be with us. And how much more so, Sov Masa B'Machshav Techila, that this is what God was thinking about from the beginning of creation, the future redemption and revelation of God to all mankind. How much more so if it's we've, it's come out of thought and now we're talking about it. Neves of a time. This is the idea of prophecy. Like it's done now, we have to say things, say things, announce. And especially the big announcement is, hine, hine, behold, the redemption is here. Say it. We are now in the days of Mashiach. Let's open up our eyes, do more good, say more good, think more good. And we'll see in a revealed way that the world really is good. Tomorrow, God willing, is Yom Shishi. We're going to finish this. We'll finish it. 8.30 in the morning. Be with us. And we'll finish this beautiful Sicha. 8.15 in the morning. From where is this? Yes. Al Pizet. We'll finish this. Okay. Let's do the Yom Yom. Oh, we have the Yom Yom. One second. My pleasure. Yom, yom. Here we go. The daily message. When you're called up to the Torah, what do you do? You touch the beginning and the end, end of the reading. Some people only touch the beginning. In Chabad, we touch the beginning and the end of what's going to be read to you. Then you kiss the talit where it touched or it's the, the thing that wraps the Torah. You roll up the Torah, turn your face slightly to the right, and you say the blessing, and then you open the Torah to read. In <clears throat> describing the unique qualities of human, about what is, what is man, or a human being? So there's four terms that are used. There's Adam, Adam, Ish, Enosh, and Gever. Adam is a person that displays intellect. Ish, that's talking about the quality of emotions of a person, an ish. When a person is called an enosh, it's sort of a not a nice word. This shows weakness, either intellectually or emotionally or both. Gever, on the other hand, is a person who has overcome his weaknesses and removes any obstacles to attaining intellectual or emotional excellence. A gever, in other words, works upon the enosh to elevate him to the level of ish or adam. Since it's possible to turn an enosh, which is a person who is very weak in his emotional or intellectual connection to God, you can turn an enosh into an ish or even to an adam, which means a, 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 a intellectual excellence. and he, So it's obvious that an enosh must have, in, in other words, the most <clears throat> seemingly uh, un, untalented <coughs> and unblessed Jew, because he can convert, convert himself and into these highest qualities, it must be that they're already inside of him. Inside of every Jew is contained the highest of possible qualities. And really that's the true about all mankind. And that's really what Mashiach will reveal. That's why we need Mashiach. Now have a good day with Mashiach now, Yechiel Melech, and we will meet again at three o'clock with God's will and learn the Haftorah of this Shabbat. Anochi, Anochi.